Hi, I'm Dr. Vivek Kaul from the University of Rochester Medical Center. Uh, and uh, with me is Dr. Shivangi Kotari, uh, one of my colleagues, and uh, the senior author and also the corresponding author on uh, this interesting paper here. Shivangi, welcome. Thank you. Uh, the paper is titled Career Prospects and Professional Landscape for Advanced Endoscopy Fellowship Training, a survey assessing graduates from 2009 to 2013. Now, this was recently published in GIE, and uh, uh, it received a lot of attention. Uh, so what, uh, may I ask, prompted you to, to uh, take on a, a project like this? So uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, we wanted, uh, with increasing number of uh, advanced endoscopy or fellowships uh, positions throughout the country and increasing number of applicants uh, as per ASG over the last two, three years, uh, fellows that are applying for these fellowships, uh, I felt it necessary to sort of bring it to the forefront that, you know, you hear everybody saying that the market is saturated, but is it really? And uh, so we wanted to see what the uh, the uh, graduates from the last five years from advanced endoscopy training had to say about this. And uh, that was the main driving force, was to bring to the forefront the uh, landscape uh, for the future uh, prospective uh, individuals who want to apply for these fellowships or these trainings and uh, the you know the landscape that is out there and you know how it would look in the next couple of years right I remember having a discussion about uh, how many fellowships there are currently and in the past last few years that how many have developed right. and I suspect that at some level the discussion uh, progressed into a, a research meeting around this topic and uh, yeah. uh, it culminated into uh, this uh, very nice article. Yeah because uh, I mean and, uh, you know we contacted ASG and the number of uh, fellowship programs have increased uh, to over a hundred you know over 50 of these are ASG listed uh, you know equal number are no not listed on ASG and uh, the number of applicants for this has also increased going through the match. It has gone up with just within two years from 90 to over 100 applicants. Right. So. right, well it does provide a very nice overview of the ASG match program as well as the non-matched uh, fellowships out there and what the applicant pool is and how it has exponentially grown in the last few years. Mm -hmm. What were the main results of, uh, of your survey? So we surveyed uh, graduates uh, who got formal advanced endoscopy training uh, over the la uh, five years uh, from 2008 to 2000, 2009 to 2013. And uh, we sent out uh, surveys after getting permission from their programs and uh, you know we reached out to them. We sent them a 16 question survey and uh, asking them about uh, you know, uh, whether they found it hard to find a job, whether they're doing the same kind of procedures they were trained to. And uh, it was done over uh, four weeks. They got the survey every, every week for four weeks. And uh, we had uh, over 43% people respond. That's the a good response rate, right? Yeah, for right. a survey, I, right. I think uh, that right. was a great good response rate. And uh, over 70% of the respondents uh, felt that the market uh, for advanced endoscopy jobs is saturated. Right. Nearly 46% uh, um, uh, themselves found it difficult to find jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, you know there are mentors. Them, you know, the to people who trained in the last five years are training fellows, and uh, over 70% of those felt that they're finding it hard to place their fellows into um, good advanced endoscopy jobs. Right. So it sounds like the theme is that uh, there are uh, more applicants and fewer. Uh, optimal jobs for these applicants. And again, to remind uh, the viewers, the survey uh, was based on practicing advanced endoscopists. Yes, Between these are people who these are, are not fellows. These no, are no, these are uh, practicing GI physicians who right. were formally trained right. and who have been in practice now since 2008 to 2013. Right. But it's interesting that uh, even their mentors are finding that uh, they're finding it hard to place these uh, physicians in, in practices that they would ideally consider right. uh, the, uh, the ideal practices. So uh, this is a, a bit different information than uh, what uh, may generally be uh, known. Uh, now this is being formally studied. So right. this is a fairly important implication uh, that the study brings uh, to the fore here. It does, and uh, you know I can um, I will admit that it's it's not a big sample size, but mm -hmm. I think it does bring to the forefront the uh, issue, and you know I think we need to talk about it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know maybe try to do something about it with the uh, ASG leadership looking at it. Right. And. Uh, 
you know, it, uh, it's very important for the next generation mm -hmm. who are aspiring to, um, you know, become advanced endoscopists as to what uh, the landscape looks like. Right. And, uh, right. And uh, I think uh, one of the important things here is to recognize is that this is a relative, this is, a, you know, the first survey of its kind. It's a relatively small, uh, uh, you know, uh, survey group, but it does have a good response rate. Um, one of the things that uh, I looked at the paper, it may be the case that um, there is a maldistribution of uh, advanced endoscopy talent across the country. In other words, uh, both the coasts are heavily populated. Uh, some of the more remote areas may not have these services. So right. there may be a more a question of imbalance rather than... Uh, right. Again, we, di we didn't uh, go into the geographic locations of the uh, respondents, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that, you know, that, uh, that can certainly be looked at. That's a great uh, um, area of, uh, you know, pl place we can uh, further get more information from because uh, uh, what we are, uh, what we know, uh, you know, is that, uh, of course, the coasts are heavily uh, populated with advanced endoscopists, and I think uh, there are regions in this country which truly need an advanced endoscopist. You know, people travel for years. CPs for three, four hours still. That is correct. That so is correct. I think uh, what truly needs to be addressed is uh, we do need to train a uh, you know, good number of um, trainees in advanced procedures, but place them in areas which truly need them. You right. know, uh, right. oversaturating the area that are already saturated makes it frustrating even for the graduating fellow to find a job right. who wants to stay in these oversaturated areas. And the thing is, they don't uh, keep up with those procedures. Right. If you look at our uh, results, a lot of the fellows are not are not doing the same complexity of procedures they were trained to do. Right, I believe. Only about 39 percent of in the uh, private practice of, are of physicians in private practice who received a very high quality advanced endoscopy uh, training. Only about 35, 39 percent are, are doing them are actually performing the procedures at that level. Right, which and is pretty striking. And over 50 percent of our respondents are actually in small practices, like zero to one. Right. So they um, may be the only attending in that practice, which right. is not ideal. They may not have the multidisciplinary platform that that they were used to in their training. Right. So a lot of these questions are coming to, to, to light. I think this is the beginning of a very, uh, should be a very interesting conversation across the nation. And uh, some strategies will definitely will have to be looked at, right. um, uh, hopefully through the AGs of the ASGE. Right. Uh, but I do congratulate you on this uh, very interesting and offbeat uh, uh, topic. Thank and you. I think it's the first of its kind. And uh, hopefully it'll get a discussion started. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.